just the lightest smear of well seal. I always use well seal, it's by far the best in my opinion. They tell you to apply it with brushes, but I uh, hmm, don't know how quite you're going to do that. Can't beat a mark one finger. Be, be absolutely certain this area in here is covered because we don't want any pressure from the crankcases or from the conrod area blowing into the gearbox. The dimple's got to go upwards and it's got to slot into that area there. So what I do is try and make a point of alignment so we've got that cut out there which is approximately the centre of the circlip gap. Yeah. Um, so I put this onto there with that aligned approximately into the centre of the gap and that would probably be okay. And you've got Okay, so you can see that. So this is this is what I'm talking about. So this there's this little yeah. channel there. Yeah. Aligned with the dot there. And then the circuit opening is there aligned with the channel there. So in theory nothing can go wrong. In theory. Okay. Right, next thing is to heat up the crankcase half the game this side. And we've seen enough heating up, I think, for yeah, one I lifetime, so. so we're going we're gonna to cut it there for a bit. It's just a question of placing it carefully, checking that that hasn't moved. That's home. So we heated up until we did the spit test and then found very brave and put it on with his hands. The next thing is was in these. going in because you've probably seen Alan bolts going before <laughs> so basically we do them all up and if you can sort of even them up so don't tighten them all up on one side so yeah, as you go into sort of diagonals as yeah. well and just kind of work around like that so and that's to stop it warping the places yeah. isn't it because if you did it's the same with the head if you just put tightened them down you know, it would just, it might warp it. Um, and you actually, are you talking about with that or do you go in with a Allen key afterwards by hand? I don't use this, I use. Oh, so that's on a really light. Yeah, this, this is a light setting. It's too long. It's the wrong one. That's the right one. So you wazz them in and then tighten them by hand. Yeah. So just showing the lovely Brian tightening by hand, we finish off the, uh, the yeah, crankcase. Yeah, I, I made this up just to sort of give me approximately the sort of leverage I need, and I just take it until the until the Allen key starts to twist, and that's around about tight enough. And then you can also see that we're talking about the pattern. You go sort of across. You don't go. All the way around in one go, you just go you sort of zigzag across the bolts to even the pressure. Let's do that. So that looks good. The next quick and dirty test is is the gearbox fairly clear. Yeah. So what would be signs of a signs are wrong on this assumedly like the crank doesn't turn. If the crank doesn't turn, then you've got real problems.
And again, the gearbox, so the feel of that is... Well, yeah, it, it, means, gear, isn't it? it needs... It needs the the, um, the drive wheel on yeah. to give it a proper spin and then... Okay. So the first job this side is the detent arm and spring. If I can get it in, in the hole. Nothing worse than seeing other people fumble. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good to know, in fact, that when you do it, it's not... You know what I mean? It's just what everybody does. Yeah. <laughs> and so you just... Uh, just spotted something that spring if that was Chris's I'd replace it so I think I've got one of them kicking around somewhere can you see where it's raised it doesn't close up completely oh uh, yeah, yeah um yeah a new one okay and that hasn't lasted that long I replaced that last season so yeah but there's, there's no no telling when they're gonna no 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 oh yeah so this has yeah. to sit over that, that there, which is a non-standard item, because <laughs> uh, usually there's a little um, bit of metal sticking up for yeah. the slot in it. So this is a custom, custom piece of kit which you might have in your engine. So it's a little tiny um, Allen bolt that's sitting there that's got a thin enough neck for the spring to wrap around, but we're gonna have to undo it. So we won't video that because it's boring. So we're putting the end cap on the selector barrel. Not every engine has got this system of retaining the the detent arm. It's a good one, but it's uh, it's a bit of a faff sometimes. And I'm not certain when I look at it if it would be a good idea to put that in with some Loctite. In fact, it would be a good idea. That's the bottom end of the spring. Let's try and close it up a little bit. See, if you come round here, you can see it's quite open. Oh, yeah. Um, you can get in there with some pliers and just give it a little tweak to close it up. Sounds good. Might be worth it. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay. Yeah, with these, drive, these cast drive wheels, they're lightened. But that's about as much as you want to take out of the centre. You can take the corners off here, which is peripheral weight and is a good idea. And that's actually happened on this one. You can see the 45 degree angle there, which reduces the peripheral weight, which is what you're really looking for. Um, but this one is overall lighter, I'm sure. But they both look in good condition, so it's a small nick on that one. But that's just something that's gone through. Some small chips there. Yep. I'm inclined to use this one, which looks pristine, really, on the edges. Yeah. Small chip there. Larger chip there. Oh yeah. I mean, with this bevel gear, there's there's quite a lot of gear engaged engaged at one time, so it's not quite as serious as it might be. But it's something you've got to keep an eye on. Mm. Yeah, this this is probably okay. Certainly better than this one. Okay, that's the number two engines one, isn't it? Yeah. It's perfect. And I was, gonna, I was talking to Brian earlier about oil changes. After meetings, I always drop the oil, as most people do, the gearbox oil. And if you get big lumps, you sometimes get teeth. And in the part, there's always been an early warning for um, the primary drive, for me anyway, so far. It's yeah. the primary drive starting to lose teeth. So time to take it all apart and check it. That looks good. It spins nice and evenly. It needs to go on with this slot upwards so that this tang here from the washer can fit into it, like that. And then you, know, so you just put your, your big nut onto there.
using an impact driver to fit the primary drive wheel. You can lock it in there with. So what have you? What bit are you? Do you you're tucking that screwdriver just yeah. behind? It's not. There's no hole there. It's just you're no, tucking no, no. it behind. Just yeah, just yeah. to act as a stop for. Yeah. That should be enough. And then we also we're going to turn. We'll turn. We'll hammer the uh, tab up so it's a fail safe, and then yeah, comes your uncle. So expert tip five one eight, <laughs> turning up a tab washer. <laughs> oh, I never thought of this. Hence the many screwdriver holes in. Right then, you just finish it off with a. With a hammer, would you believe? Oh, really? <laughs> Should the hammer work? Oh, okay. No. Yeah, it's got it. No. Okay, that's good. And crucially here, what you're doing is this, this job, it's the only work thing is we're doing is it goes tight to the nut, isn't it? So that there's no way that that nut can actually come loose, whatever, no. whatever happens. Because it's, it's keyed in onto the shaft the other side by that tab. Right, there's stage one engines on its side. Pop the um, locator ball, I don't know quite what that's called really, but a big ball bearing to the big ball bearing <laughs> to, to an